Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. The, uh, another matter related to this before I let you go, counsel, is the issue of uh, the, another reopening of a major case, the case of eligibility for the former president, Edgar Lungu. This matter was settled several times. I don't know how many times it was settled, you tell us. But the part I'm interested in, because you're appearing before the same court and you may not discuss a particular details, the part I'm interested in was uh, this pronouncement uh, by the court, especially by the judge president on you, trying to send you to Laz. <laughs> but before you answer that, speak to the issue. Can you reopen the case? It has become fashionable. Here, JCC reopened the case as soon as they had new commissioners in Jala, you know, uh, uh, and other two members of the new commission. They reopened the case for the three judges. And we, we've seen an adverse decision. We are now faced with the eligibility case of President Lungu. Even if it has been settled by the same court, and in many cases, same judges, other than a few that have joined it, it has been reopened. And then they, you had made this application for their recusal, and then they made those uh, uh, rulings on that. So you have those three questions. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a loaded question. Yeah, let's start It's with a the, very loaded question. But how many times has this case been, uh, uh, been uh, heard uh, and settled? Yeah, but uh, just for purposes of uh, context, decisions that are made by institutions are decisions for the institutions and not the individuals that are there. Occupying it. We can't have a situation where a decision changes depending on who the is there. The new office holder. As, a, uh, as an office holder. We have seen the decision of the Attorney General changing because there has been a change of office bearers in the eligibility case. And we had occasion to argue before the court. Mm. So this court is not like the Attorney General's chambers who are flip-flopping. Even when ordinary, they shouldn't be flip-flopping. Mm. And um, the, 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 the very important issue is that there must be certainty in the law. Mm. Where if there's a decision that is made and you have a similar set of facts, you must be able to know that there's predictability in the manner that the court is going to make decisions. Mm. If there's no certainty or predictability in the manner that the court is going to make its decision, that's only a recipe for chaos. Mm. It's a recipe for chaos because the trust in the system will be eroded. Even the very things that uh, President Haka Inde Chilema says he wishes to bring, such as foreign investment, maybe it explains as to why the promise for foreign investment is not coming in. Because one of the things that an investor looks at mm. is how is the dispute resolution mechanism of your country. Yeah. Do your courts follow the law as it is? Mm -hmm. uh, is there certainty in the manner that they settle their disputes? Yeah. If they have problems with that, they will not come. If they think that your courts are capable of being manipulated to decide in a certain way, they will not come. Perhaps it explains the economic downturn that we have. Mm -hmm. Because everything that has been done by this government has been to the extent that you can no longer trust our institutions of governance, mm. you can no longer trust, Past or there's diminished trust in the mm. certainty and predictability of the courts. And that is trickling down to organs such as the JCC. Mm. Now, we are awaiting the, the judgment on the 10th of December. It will be curious to mm. see that there's a shift in position. Curious because in the Danpule case, in the way we argued, we said you made it very clear mm. in no uncertain terms that he was eligible. In the case of Bampika Palasa, you re-emphasized that particular position and said we have already decided mm. one too many times mm. that he is eligible. Then came the Sishua Sishua case, as well as the Legal Resources Foundation case, mm. which were put together and the decision was made 
And the court even warned in that case and said, listen, it should not be the practice that you keep pressing and pressing a matter on, a, on an issue that has already been resolved, Settled, resolved hoping to get a them. different result. You can't do that. Mm. So when this matter came up the fifth time, because I'm counting the Sishua case yeah. and uh, the legal resources. Uh, uh, yes, legal resource uh, yeah. Foundation. yes, there's two cases that were consolidated. Uh, that were consolidated. The fifth time now it comes up, we say, listen, on a preliminary issue, you have dealt with this matter and you can't be seen to be reopening this mm. matter. And now we have argued. They said, okay, you have raised this in your defense mm. and we'll hear you and we'll hear what the other party yeah. has, to, has to say. And we went and argued to say, even though these people want you to reverse your decision in this particular case, mm. they have not prayed for that answer. They have not asked you specifically to say, reverse this decision that you've made and of course we've argued other matters and we're looking forward to see whether How they will determine. the court will remain certain whether the court will not behave like the judicial complaints commission we are yet to see that on the 10th of december we are hoping that they do not behave like the judicial complaints commission we're hoping that they're able to stand by the decisions that they made four times before mm -hmm. yes we, we, we're hoping for that and you asked a very interesting uh, issue as to the yeah, question you had an application yes, you had, an, had application an application of recusal yeah, an application for recusal. Yeah, i think that's a normal exactly. application in yeah. any normal matter see you felt that yeah. the three judges were conflicted and you raised a, a petition but the answer was yeah. an angry answer even the judge president asking the attorney general to refer you to last <laughs> was there anything wrong with raising the recusal the reason the law has provided for applications for recusal is because the law envisages that there will be situations where that application will be necessary yeah. and this was one of them this was one of them because the apprehensions of a person that is going before the judiciary have to be taken care of in the light of having a fair hearing. Yeah. A fair hearing is guaranteed by the Constitution. Every person should have a fair hearing. Yeah. Any departure from that, even a perception of a departure from it, should be avoided. Mm -hmm. And this application is brought. And we're saying, listen, there is a close association between you, Judge Shilimi, and President Hakainde Chilema, who is a, likely to be a beneficiary of these proceedings. And we think it may not be a good thing for you to sit. Our client is apprehensive that you may not be perceived to be impartial. Now, the issue is not whether actually the person May, 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 may be partial, but the perception mm. of it is sufficient. Now, the, the ruling comes and he says, yes, there is a connection, but it's remote. And we're saying the, the very fact that the connection, the connection is exists. there, no matter how remote, is sufficient ground for one to recuse themselves. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the person says, no, it's remote, I will not. Okay, I, I, I will not recuse myself. Now, I think the judge should have gone further and says, although I'm of the view that the connection is remote, I will recuse myself mm -hmm. for purposes of the perception yeah. not being that I may not act in this manner. Mm -hmm. My view is that it should not have gone further to say, I will therefore sit. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have been. After that. establishing exactly. a link, exactly. although it, he deemed it himself to be remote. Exactly. But he then chose to then sit chose, on the case. Yes, chose to sit mm. on the case. And um, the, 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 the ruling by, by Judge Nalula, it was, it was a very, very interesting ruling. We were representing a client 
who had certain concerns. She used the word modus operandi. Yes, she she says, says, every time I've sat in yeah. your case, you, yeah. your law firm, Makebi Zulu, <laughs> you seem to have created a modus operandi where, yeah. uh, you know, you want me to recuse myself. And then she says, why me? Yeah, why me? Exactly. <laughs> no, I, 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 I read that... Uh, that that ruling it was a very interesting ruling but perhaps for for our viewers our viewers our viewers and for perception to the whole issue see previously in the Milingolungu case there was an application that was made before the court mm. and um, i did not think that she would go that far to isolate the lawyers and deal with the lawyers in the manner that that she did mm -hmm. if she intended to go in that in that direction during the time we were submitting she should have at least asked us to say listen why is it that you're so concerned about my sitting here mm -hmm. in that other case you made a similar application, application of recusal uh, of recusal is this your modus operandi mm. we would have been heard we would have been heard we would have explained to her we would have explained to the court that no this is not our modus operandi in that particular case we acted this way because of these circumstances and these facts that were we're faced with and it was necessary to protect the interests of our client to be able to delve into that issue and make that application which we make but to come in this particular ruling mm. and make such uh, pronouncements, pronouncements and that ruling becomes part of the record is pretty much unfair because we're not heard mm. and no mm. party should be condemned and heard no now, when there was for, an application uh, for recusal we're hearing issues of the recusal exactly so but in the judgment the judge brought past issues yes that past you, issues you even in the other case you, you, exactly. you applied on the recusal now let me tell you something that happened in the other case mm. there was a motion that was raised mm. the motion that was supposed to be heard mm. and uh, state council sakura scotta was leading the team yeah okay so it is not correct that it is our firm because there are three firms that were involved in that particular case we were part of 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 that case and in that case when the motion was was uh, w w was filed the matter came up before court mm -hmm. and it was brought to the attention of the court to say we can't proceed with the main matter because there's this motion that has been raised there and then herself being the person that was presiding over those proceedings says no we will not go ahead to hear that motion she made a ruling against a particular motion so mm -hmm. it was it was shocking it was pretty much shocking and uh, it, the court was asked to say let's retire to chambers and discuss this matter mm -hmm. that was granted and when the matter came up in chambers it was presented to them to say listen you can't throw out this application without hearing it mm -hmm. You can't throw it out without hearing it because we are of the view that the opinions of the other judges on the panel was not taken into account. Mm. So at that point, the court itself decided, okay, we are going to hear your application. We will hear this matter. And concern was raised to say, okay, you have already expressed your opinion over this matter. Mm. You threw it out before mm. hearing it. Yeah. Therefore, you can't say it. Mm. That issue was raised. And in that matter, when the motion came up, she didn't say it. Because she had already expressed her opinion on the yeah. matter. So if it's that issue that she was referring to, we had justifiable cause to raise the issue. Mm. Because she made a decision, in our view, without consulting the other judges that were on the panel, and she expressed her opinion even before hearing mm. the parties. Mm. And that mm. was not correct by any stretch yeah. of imagination. Yeah. That was certainly mm. not correct. And obviously, that would lead anyone in that matter to say, no, there's a perception of bias on your part. You don't like yeah. me. You, you, you don't like the way I'm proceeding in this yes. matter. Yes. And therefore, I, I don't think 
think you should be sitting in a, in a matter. <laughs> so that 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 is what happened in that case. No, the two so issues you, were conflated. Exactly. I think they, they, they were not the same, and there was no yeah. justification to import it into no, that ruling. Exactly. But they were terribly emotional. Yeah. As soon as I read the three and their justification, I said that's a reason they should actually, um, you know, recuse themselves. As a matter of fact, that yeah. should have been the reason. <laughs> the very fact that you, in fact, it is a provision of the law. If you are uncomfortable or with a lawyer for 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 a litigant, and you have issues with a lawyer for the for the litigant, mm -hmm. that should be reason enough to say I will not. Otherwise, you'll make a decision hoping to punish the lawyer for the uh, for the mm -hmm. litigant mm -hmm. when it's affecting the litigant and not the mm -hmm. lawyer necessarily. Mm -hmm. So that, in my view, should not have been part of that. Firstly, mm -hmm. because we were not heard on that particular application. Mm. Secondly, because it gave a perception that she had problems with the lawyers. Mm. And as such, she may be perceived not to make a correct decision on the fact that she has problems with the lawyers. And that should have been reason enough for her to recuse herself. So what will happen to the judiciary with the dismissal of these three judges who are now total seven, uh, with the reopening of all cases? That we uh, by all legal standards are deemed determined and settled. But now there is no guarantee that a matter against anyone can be reopened and reheard. What's the status of the judiciary? Unfortunately, that, that seems to be the precedent that is being set. And it will be sealed based on what the decision is going to be on the 10th of of December. So we're curious to see what the decision is going to be on the 10th of December. In which case, all lawyers should be ready to say, okay, that matter where the Supreme Court or indeed the uh, Constitutional Court made that decision, mm -hmm. we can always go back mm -hmm. and have them change their mind. Yeah. If they don't change their mind this time around, we'll commence mm -hmm. another action. Mm -hmm. If they don't make uh, a different decision, we, we, we'll go ad infinitum. And that really cues the issue of a matter being res judicata. Mm -hmm. Res judicata is a legal concept that mm -hmm. means that matters should be settled with finality mm -hmm. and that you can't keep dragging the same really? person to court over and over and over again over the same issues. Mm -hmm. There must be finality to the resolution of issues. Mm -hmm. That is what... I, I saw the Attorney General uh, argue very, very strongly that uh, the court has passed to review its own decisions. Does the court have power to review those decisions? See, the court has power to review its own decisions. That we can't take away from the court. The power to review its own decisions. But there must be a specific application made to the court to review that decision. Or in circumstances where another matter arises, the court can reverse their previous decision based on uh, the law new fresh ex information. existing at that time, or indeed there's fresh information that has come to their attention, which may not have been there at that particular time. But in this particular case, none of those uh, issues exist. The Constitutional Court, in more cases than many, has pronounced itself to say, we are bound by our own decisions. Mm. And uh, they, they, they have to put that into practice. We'll see if that happens on the Where on they, the they'll of be December. bound by their own previous yeah, decisions. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. Council, there are many things I want to speak to you about, especially because of what is happening. Recently, the electoral reform, uh, the electoral uh, commission of Zambia, Chairperson Mwangala Zalomis, appointed an electoral reform technical committee to review the constitution and legal provisions that hinder uh, her work as um, ECZ. I found that very, very strange. Mm -hmm. First of all, ECZ and Mangala Zalomis are creatures of the constitution. Do they have powers to set up committees to begin to hear uh, reforms to themselves? I say this because previously, any reforms have been driven by either the president through the commission of inquiry 
or through the Zambia Law Development Commission, where they would make recommendations. But here now we have a body in ECZ where Mwangala Zalomis has appointed the Electoral Reform Technical Committee and set them out in the country to gather views about what they think about the constitution in relation to uh, elections, what they think about the law in relation to elections, what they think about her body is it, and she wants to make recommendations for the law. Okay. There's another matter happening in parliament where also the speaker seems to have started a process to amend the constitution on the so-called non-contentious issues. What is happening to our law reform? Is that how it is done? You see, that's, that's why I keep telling you that it is difficult to convince a monkey <laughs> that honey <laughs> is sweeter sweet than honey. bananas. Mm, mm. The very fact that President Haka in Dechilema thinks he has control over all these institutions, it's difficult to tell him that you can't do this because he thinks it's a company, I'm the CEO, therefore I call all the shots. You can't run a country like an enterprise. I was running Eastern Province. I knew where my bounds were, mm. where the line ministry works and does its job and where I come in mm. to supervise the works that are being done by the line ministries. Mm. It did not put me in charge of the line of, of the line ministries. I could not make a decision that was contrary to the decision that has been made by a minister in a line ministry. Mm -hmm. Although those uh, ministries were under my domain yeah. in the eastern province, the decisions of the local authorities, those were under my supervision, but I could not replace my decision for theirs, mm -hmm. or their decision for mine. So. There, there, there are limits as to what can and can be, can be done. Institutions of governance are governed by the statutes that creates them. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, you have the Electoral Commission of Zambia, which is uh, regulated by its act, as well as the constitution. And everything that they do has to do with what is provided in the law. There's nowhere in the law where they said they have a right to make recommendations as to how best they can carry out the functions of their, of their office. Where there's that power, it is specifically provided for. Mm -hmm. Now you have the Law Development Commission, you have the Minister of Justice, you have all stakeholders that have a, a part to play in what the, the Electoral Commission of Zambia does. And the essence of the Electoral Commission of Zambia is to carry out uh, elections in a free and fair manner, in a manner that satisfies the will or, 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 or promotes the will of the people, promotes democracy, promotes the rule of law. To assume a power that you do not have, to say we are going to collect views as to how best we can work better as a commission. You are saying we have failed to work within the mandate that has, that been, has given, been provided for. And we are going to get views from around the country as to how we should work. Have you told us how you have failed in the first place? Mm. What is not working mm. there? Why are you going to collect views when you are the ones that are having problems with how you're working? Mm. Why are you collecting views? You're collecting views from people that are not working there. But in the meantime, the way that you're operating is what the Zambian people have decided is you the way operate. you are going to operate. Mm. Your competencies can only go so far. This is the power that we're giving to you. Yeah. And you are going to the people to beg to extend your power to do what you think you must be doing. How did the previous or successive commissions perform within the limits of the power that was given to them? Mm -hmm. What were the failures? They have not told us. Mm -hmm. In any event, I did not see anything in the budget line for Electoral Commission of Zambia to carry out that particular investigation, exercise. exercise. Mm -hmm. So who is funding it? Mm -hmm. How is it being funded? Where are the monies coming from? Is it another issue of abuse of office? Is it another issue that will be a subject of investigation at some time in the near future? Mm -hmm. Where is uh, the, 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 whoever is in charge of the commission getting this power 
to carry out these functions. I think that should be an issue that should be interrogated. And they can't do that without the blessing of the executive. And they are doing so wholly with the blessing of, of the, the executive. executive. And illegally the executive, so. exactly, and illegally so. Even when it comes to the National Assembly, the Constitution is a document for the people. Nothing emanates from the, the National Assembly. The National Assembly receives and deals with, with, uh, with, with matters. Nelly Muti cannot on her own accord say, we need to amend the Constitution. She has no such power. All that power is reserved in the people. Mm -hmm. All that power has to come from the people. The need to amend must come from, from there. The, uh, yes, from there. I know of no legislation that first emanated from National Assembly. Mm -hmm. It has to be moved by the executive. If not by the, uh, the executive, it must be moved by a backbencher. If not by a backbencher, as a citizen, I can petition mm -hmm. the National uh, Assembly, petition that uh, a certain law be enacted. I, I, I could do that, and that is obvious, uh, had to, has to be done by the members of parliament mm -hmm. and not the speaker of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. They are not the mm -hmm. author of any law. Neither are they the omega <laughs> of any law. <laughs> no, they, they forget their mere presiding exactly. officer. Exactly. They think the power the, of the speaker extends exactly. to doing the jobs of MPs. Exactly. So mm. to preside over um, a matter does not mean you initiate mm. the matter. You preside. You're a referee. Mm. You can't have a referee going to say, okay, uh, next week it's Zambia versus Morocco playing. Mm. You're, you're going outside your bounds. Yeah. Your job is to get the instructions. Okay, Zambia and Morocco are going to play. You are going to officiate. Yeah. Your role is simply to officiate mm. and not to start. So it's, it's, it's a rogue parliament that we have. Mm. It's a rogue parliament that we have. And we need to bring it back to where it's supposed to be. Mm. Mm. And finally, the state of um, human rights, you know, these... Uh, uh, Arbitrary arrest, extrajudicial yes. killings, uh, long detentions, freedom of expression, and then the yes. freedom of expression, is freedom of association. Yeah. Yes, we 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 have those problems, and there's nothing, nothing that the president can say, what uh, information minister can say, PS information can say that would take away from the fact that Zambians have seen that there's been an erosion of the freedom of expression. For the first time in this country, we have seen more cases of seditious practices, uh, a, a matter that is being used to, mm. to, to stifle dissent. Yeah. The very fact that you do not like what a citizen has said does not mean they've committed an offense. The very fact that uh, uh, a member of the executive disagrees with my opinion does not mean that then have committed an offense. But it appears that if a UPND cadre disagrees with the position that has been expressed by a member of the opposition, they'll go to the nearest police and it's seditious practices. Mm -hmm. That is what has been going on around. Mm -hmm. And the trouble is all the watchdog institutions, the CSOs that used to speak on behalf of people, have suddenly gone to sleep. They are dead. We can only conclude that perhaps the little positions that have been given to some of them that were very vocal in these issues have tend to be issues of bread and butter that they don't wish to abandon at this mm. particular point. Mm. But I think rights of individuals must be respected. Let individuals express themselves. Mm. I keep saying this. Democracy is a marketplace of ideas. You can disagree with me, but mm. I must be able, or you must be able to protect my right to hold the opinion that you do not agree with, yeah. I must be able to express my opinion without fear because that is guaranteed by the Constitution. So the mere fact that I think that the position that you hold is not a correct position, notwithstanding that your position, mm -hmm. if held mm -hmm. by so many people, yeah. can lead to a crisis, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Mm. If someone is going to say, okay, look at what is happening in other countries. Maybe our country would be better if what is happening in another country would happen here. That is my opinion. That is an opinion that I hold. You may not disagree with it. It may be suggestive of uh, 
or, or of an, uh, an illegality, but I hold the view, mm. you must be able to protect my right to say what I say. Mm. Because uh, if I'm going to keep it in my, in my head, that is not what we structured our constitution to be. We did not structure it so that people keep their thoughts to themselves. They must be able to express their thoughts. As a matter of fact, the very things that people are talking about, things to do with tribalism, things to do with um, with uh, violence that is being perpetuated, tribal remarks that are being made, you, you will see that these are issues that people discuss on the tables in their kitchens. Yeah. When they bring it out, you say you shouldn't be talking about that. Mm. It is true that the, the, the extent of tribalism that is being exercised or experienced by is much more rampant than ever before. Yeah. It is true that uh, the, 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 the people that are being favored are seemingly coming from a particular region. region. Mm. It, is, it is very true. And people are able to justify that. Mm. They look at the promotions that are being made. They look at those that have been laid aside um, and stopped from working. We have over 430 civil servants that mm. have been sur surrendered to cabinet that are staying at home, doing nothing, getting paid. And if you look at the regions that they come from, you'll be able to say that, okay, there seems to be an issue that is going against these people that are coming from this region. Yeah. Those sentiments used to be made, uh, to be made uh, previously. Those sentiments are being made now, especially uh, now they are at, more, at a much more large scale. Because the, the experience, everyone is experiencing it and mm. saying it should not be so. Uh, it should not be so. And the people that are talking about that are talking about it in the sense of condemning it that it should not be the norm. Mm. They're not talking about it in the sense of that it should be promoted. Mm. If they were saying it in the sense that it should be promoted, therein lies an offense. Yeah. If they are talking about it in the sense of condemning it, mm. then. You should protect their right to say it mm. because they're saying this illegality should be stopped mm. and they're not saying this thing should be perpetuated mm. but instead you're having people that are saying no let him come here and we're going to circumcise him mm. those people are not being punished yeah and those yeah. people are saying no no you can't do that you should mm. not be doing what you're saying should, uh, should be done i saying okay because you said that you are suggesting that people should be violent mm. what you said is capable of making people rise and be violent no 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 it's not about the capacity to make yeah. people rise and be violent the person that you should be punishing is the person who rises and becomes violent because the person who says or condemns a particular act says yeah. this is wrong and should not be done yeah yes yeah yeah but oh. we seem to be having problems in no 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 clearly yeah. there's uh, yeah. that threat of freedom of expression freedom of movement and um, you know, uh, you just can't believe that we are in a democracy. And I believe all those reports saying there is uh, a dictatorship and uh, a reign currently. Honorable Makebi Zulu, you, you stop me from calling you Honorable Makebi Zulu. <laughs> Mr. Makebi Zulu, yes, sir. I think it's been an interesting journey. I hope to bring you, just to speak to specific issues, I brought you generally to, I think for the country to know who you are, who Makebi Zulu is, what forms Makebi Zulu, and why does he comment about the issues he, he comments about. I'm glad that you took the particular cases of the three judges and the issue of um, the eligibility case to demonstrate that you just can't reopen cases in the manner they are reopening. And you just can't abandon your previous ruling of your office because you are the new office holder, you know. Um, what are your last words? Well, uh, perhaps my last word is that this is our country. My uh, uh, last words, as it were. This is our country. We need to protect it. It is incumbent upon each and every one of us to protect the democracy that we have. Respect for the rule of law that must be paramount and this government must switch to that particular position because it appears as though now the modus operandi is let's clamp down on the opposition let's choose who our opponents are going to be in the next election that should not be the case every citizen should be arise and protect the democracy of this country mm -hmm. they should arise and ensure that the opposition is able to speak and speak freely as regards matters they should allow the public to be able to weigh the opinions of different political parties for purposes of making a formidable decision as to who they want to lead them you can't 
be the one to want to choose what the people are going to hear, yeah. what the people are going to say. Mm -hmm. We had an interesting issue where you go to a private property called uh, the Cathedral of the Child Jesus and say you can't gather here. Mm -hmm. You stop the archbishop from from going to gather there. What gives you the power? What mm -hmm. gives you the nerve to stop someone from getting onto their own property without justifiable cause, mm -hmm. without a court order? The, the invasion on people's privacy has been exponential in this regime. The, 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 the former the, president the, wanted to go exactly. and raid yesterday, oh, and they sealed the area. And they sealed the area. There's been this utter abuse of the police, which should not be the case. We have degenerated into a police state. Haka Indej Lema used to say, Zambia has become a police state. It's 10 times much more under his yes. watch. And mm -hmm. it can only be that because he chose to be in charge of all law enforcement agencies, he's the one that's calling the shots. It's time for him to wise up and protect this country, not just for himself, mm -hmm. for his children and children's children, his great-grandchildren, and for his legacy as yeah. well. He shouldn't go down in history as a person who brought the democrat, uh, democra uh, uh, democratic credentials of this country to its knees. Yeah. Currently, democracy of this nation, the rule of law, is on its knees. Yeah. And it is not President Haka Ndei Chilema who will lift it up. Because he has shown in the three and a half years that he's been there that he has failed and failed lamentably. He should wise up and do the right thing. But between honey and the banana, you think that uh, the banana is sweeter than honey. He thinks uh, <laughs> a banana is sweeter than honey. You can never convince him that honey is I sweeter know. than and a banana. And if you put a bag of money here and the banana, he thinks that the banana is better. He doesn't know that the money can buy more bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Make Bizulu, a constitutional lawyer, renowned Lusaka lawyer, you've seen him take up those big cases in our country and he's been a regular commentator on public, civic and legal issues in our country. I was privileged to host him to discuss the state of democracy and human rights in Zambia. It's a matter of serious worry and it's been documented by various international reports. In the past, Honorable Makebe Zulu, I'm disappointed. In the past, it will be our own civil society groupings that will demonstrate that the rule of law, law is under threat, that democracy is threatened, that will highlight these human rights issues before international reports caught on. But now it's the opposite. It's like all our uh, civil society and human rights commission are literally reactive. silent or intimidated or reactive, whatever it is. We are now allowing international bodies to determine and decide about who we are instead of our own institutions highlighting. But I guess that's what dictatorship does. It cows everyone into silence. Dear viewers, until we have another guest next time, uh, God bless you, God bless our country, and shalom, shalom. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.